Hey guys, what's up? It's Dragoon here. So about a week ago, I promised you guys the Evil deck profile for what I had been playing in the last three or four of my Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel series. And here it is. This is the deck I've been running um, with Evils. Uh, it's a pretty fun deck. It certainly has... Um, uh, I guess you could say it's been power creeped pretty hard. I don't know, like when, when this deck first came out, I thought it was a pretty crazy deck. It was really powerful, it was really cool at the same time. Um, a guy in my locals played it all the time, and I never wanted to go up against him because back then I didn't really know what I was doing against the deck. And now, having played it myself, and of course have having understood it over the course of the years, it's it's not too difficult of a deck to play, and it's also not... Uh, the most consistent deck, which of course I would have never known back in the day. But So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. Uh, there's no way I was going to buy all these cards. Uh, just I just don't feel like playing this deck in real life. It's a fun deck, but it's just, yeah, it's, just keep that in mind. Um, triple Westlow, starting things off, and Triple Najasho. These, these are pretty much the only cards you really want to see. Uh, you never want to draw any of the Evil Swords. You just want the Evil Tiles, which is why you play... It, I'll, just, I'll just get to this in a second, but this is why you play three of each of these. Now, this is the one that you want at the beginning of every single game. You want Westlow because Najasho you only want if you have Evo Force. You don't really, you don't really care to have him otherwise. Um, what you can do in this deck, which I never really tried, but you can try it yourself. You can actually play Horn of Heaven in this deck because you contribute off Najasho for Horn of Heaven. Get Horn of Heaven's effect to negate the summon. And uh, go ahead and get into Joshua to grab a Noble Sword. I've seen it done in the past. A friend of mine who used to play this deck a long time ago used to play uh, One Horn of Heaven. So I could actually see that being decent nowadays with Pendulum Summoning and stuff like that. So it might be good. You can give it a try. I just never did. Um, now, the big problem this deck has is it doesn't really have any good first turn plays, at least offensively. The only really good one you have is Rescue Rabbit into... Uh, and Lagia Dolka, but other than that, you're just gonna be you're gonna be ideally setting a Westlow and hoping it gets its flip effect off. It's very passive, just like Gusto. If you ever play Gusto? I mean, it's not not exactly like that because Gusto is incredibly passive. But this deck, you're not you, at at the beginning. It's gonna be passive, and if you don't get Westlow's effect off, it really sets you back. Like if they decide, oh, I don't I don't know what that is. I'm just gonna dark hole him. I've had it. It sucks. So, triple Westlow, triple Najasho, most important monsters. Uh, then for the Evelsars, you have Serato. He's really the only one you don't mind drawing so much, and the only reason for that is because he's 1900. Other than that, you don't want to see him. But his effect, I actually I should probably show you these real fast, but like I said, you tribute him, and then this is, you flip a special summon Evil Sword from the deck. All right, so if you don't know what the Evil Swords do, they have effects that they gain when they're special summoned by an Evil Tile. It's just evolution. That was the concept of this deck, if you weren't already aware. So Serato gets the effect that he gains 200 attack, and um, it it also allows him to add an Evil Tile from the deck to the hand if he kills a monster in battle. It's a really good effect. It's kind of annoying that it is uh, battle phase based, but it's, I mean, it makes sense, but it's its really good because you can up him to 21. It works well for OTKs, and it just lets you add extra Westlows and Ajashos, uh, like if you have uh, an Evo Force or whatever. So he's pretty hes pretty good. Uh, Diplo is really good too. Its effect when it's special summoned by an Evil Tile is you target a spell or trap your opponent controls and destroy it. This is incredibly important, especially now because you can help get rid of Pendulums. So this card's really good. It only has 1600 attack though, so... But you don't want to draw, and this one you want to draw even less. It's Evelsar Volcano. It allows you to special an Evelsar from the graveyard. So you can effectively bring back any of these two, or I, you can get himself if you really want to and make a free Xyz. That monster can't attack, though, so keep that in mind. Um, then for the last of the monsters, we have the one Rescue Rabbit and Triple Saber Source. Just because the deck needs a really good first turn play, and this gives it that, plus Saber Source is good, and it helps you make... Lagia and Dolka. That's why Dino Rabbit was a deck. So, onto the spells we have. I have. I put in one copy of Unexpected Die. It just lets you special summon a level four lower normal from the deck. So ideally, Rabbit can get you two of these. This one can get you the third one. I realize in some circumstances, this might be dead or this might be dead if you draw 
all this stuff. It really doesn't happen that often, or at least it never did for me. I can only account for maybe one or two times in which I drew uh, any of these cards, and they weren't live at the time of me drawing them. Uh, some t some people like to play more copies of this, as far as I know. Uh, one seemed to work well enough for me. I didn't really want to see it too much. It was just kind of, it was kind of nice because it, it gives you another decent first turn play because you can activate this into a saber source and then normal summon any of these if you happen to be unfortunate enough to draw them. And then we have triple upstar goblin because you want to open uh, Westlow or Rabbit or some sort of decent play as often as you possibly can. It's really important when you're going first in this deck that you open with something. Otherwise, you're not going anywhere. Uh, double Space Typhoon. If you find the room, if you find a way, you can up this to three. I I mean, you, you don't really have to because you have Diplo, but it's also kind of convenient sometimes. Uh, you can also just side a third one if that works for you. Uh, triple Evo Diversity lets you add an Evil Tile or an Evil Sar from the deck to the hand. You can only use one per turn, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, just because it gets you any monster in your deck besides these four. Like, it's really good. I, ideally, you're obviously going to go West Lower and Josho, but hey, if you have you know, one of these level fours on board, you can just add another one. So it's really good. Uh, obviously, it's a search card that searches anything in the deck. Um, and then Evo Force, also one of the most important cards in the deck. You trivial an Evil Tile, and then you special summon an Evil Sore monster from the deck, and you treat it as if it was special summoned by an Evil Tile. So it's really good. Like You can flip this guy, get his effect, special one, and then activate Evo Force, tributing him off and specialing one. So that's really good, but it's best used with Najasho because this tributes, Najasho's effect activates when he's tributed. So you activate this, Najasho gets tributed, something comes out, and then Najasho's effect will go off, bringing out another monster. So it's a two card. Like, you don't plus at all like Rabbit does. Like, Rabbit lets you make XCs for free. This does all let you make them for free, but it lets you make them easily with uh, Evo Force and Najasho, or Evo Force and Westlow. Westlow, I guess you can say, is technically a plus when, he, when he's flipped, but you still have to tribute him off, so. It's really good. It's an amazing card. It's a fun card to use, and I don't think, in, in, if, unless you somehow change the number of these, I would never play less than three of this card. Uh, and then for the rest of the spells, you have one Rageki, one Book of Moon. I think those are obvious. And Instant Fusion, because you play a lot of level fours, so Norden can get them back. Free Xyz are always nice. Uh, the deck plays nine traps. You have some basic staples with Vanities, Solemn, Bottomless, and Ring of Destruction. Any of these, plus Lagia or Dolka out on the board, is really powerful. It allows you to have really well-established boards, especially of Anities plus uh, Lagias. It's pretty incredible. Um, it just, like I said, it gives you a very strong board presence and can make it extremely, extremely difficult for your opponent to get around. I play one copy of Mirror Force. This is kind of like a wild card uh, spot for the traps. I think the following four are pretty integral, um, but you can play whatever you want. In this case, I like Mirror Force just because the deck doesn't have a whole lot of removal. Um, the deck is kind of uh, given the idea that you stop your opponent before they can get a big board. The idea is to control, and if you can't get that, it can put you in a pretty difficult spot. So, I mean, Raigeki is obvious. You're always going to be playing that. Uh, so I figured Mirror Force would be the ideal card in this case, simply because, like I said, if you have if your opponent already has a well-established board, your Lagi and Dolk aren't going to do a whole lot unless the monsters are weaker than them. So Mirror Force was where it was for me. And then I play Double Phoenix Chain like I mentioned in the last duel video. I took out the Solemn Notices, which are down here you can see in the side deck. Um, just on the loan aspect, that I took them out of all of my decks because I did not want to get used to playing them. The card is amazing. It's so incredibly good. But I would not be surprised at all if Konami makes this card a secret rare. And so I didn't want to get used to it. I didn't want to let my strategies or my deck building hinge upon this card because it is so powerful. Um, because there's no way I'm going to be able to afford to buy multiple copies of Solemn Notice. So I'd have to get super lucky and pull them. And even then, like you guys know, I don't buy a whole lot of packs. So Fiendish Chain is where it was at for here. You can replace this with Breakthrough or with Forbidden Chalice if you'd like. Uh, I like Fiendish Chain just because, like I said, I don't want them to attack over my Lagia and Dolka. Uh, 24, 23 is, have de are, is decent attack, but it certainly is not the best. So 
you can you can put it whenever you want here. Like Chalice is kind of good. I kind of I, I tried that a little bit too because you can buff up these guys. It just kind of sucks when you have to negate their effects. But I mean, if you've already used Lagia's effect, who cares? So you can try Chalice if you like. But right now I'm playing Phoenix Chain. And the last trap card is one of the most amazing trap cards in the deck. I could not believe they even made it when it first came out because it goes it essentially goes against everything the deck stood for. It's Evo Singularity. What this one does is you target an Evil Tile and an Evil Star from your graveyard. Special summon them both. Or, well, technically you special summon an Xyz monster from the extra deck. And if you do, you add those two to, to it as Xyz materials. So Lagia Dolka, in the terms of evolution, have to be made by dinosaurs. You go Reptile, Dinosaur, Dragon. But this says, nah, who cares? Just take a Reptile and a Dinosaur and we'll, we'll turn that into a Dragon. It is incredible. It is a miracle fusion for the deck, essentially, except it's way better because, like, Lagi and Dolka are probably better than any of the other miracle heroes. Like, Shining and Zero are amazing, and so is Nova Master, but come on, like, Lagi and Dolka are incredible. The only reason I only play two of this card, like, you can totally max out on it. You can see I have another one down here in the side deck, like I said, because I did max out on it at one point, but I switched, I cut it to two just in terms of testing to try to squeeze in some other cards. Because sometimes, like, you never want to open with this card. Because, you, when you, like I said, your ideal play is setting a Westlo West or going on a Joshua Evil Force. Now, Joshua Evil Force is fine, but, like, Joshua Evil Force, when you're going first, sucks. Because you're either going to have to waste Diplo's effect and not kill anything, or, like, you're not going to do anything with Serato, and you're not going to have anything in the Grave for Volcano. So it's like, no, you don't want that. You want Westlo flip, do something with these, and then if you manage to put Westlow and Serato, or on the following turn you can do to Joshua Evil Force on your second turn, then this card becomes live. It takes a little too long to become live for me to like play to three. Like, you want to draw it once your graveyard is, is set up. You want to draw it as soon as possible after that, but you never want to see it opening in game. So that's why I only play two of it right now. Uh, for the extra deck, it is relatively standard. It's a rank four toolbox with uh, a couple minor additions, which I'll talk about on their own. So let's start with the rank fours. We have anti-luminescent knights. You can play whatever you want. Some of these I think are more important than others. Um, but if you like certain rank four XCs, you play what you like. Uh, Emerald, I think this card is actually pretty important. I would definitely recommend playing this one. I know he's still stupidly expensive. Like he's barely played, as far as I know. Like yeah, he's a he is a staple rank four in general. But like. I don't know, not a, I don't think a whole lot of decks actually make this guy that often. But he's really important in this deck, especially if you decide to opt out of playing Jar of Avarice. I'll talk about these cards down here after the extra deck, or in between like I have been. Uh, this card, what it allows you to do is you target any five cards in the grave, shuffle them into your deck, and draw a card. It can be really convenient like if you want to put the normals back in the deck, so you can make this live or this live if you already use them. Uh, plus, just putting... Some of your Evil Stars back in the deck, or even a couple of these. But any card, you can put anything you want. Like, and you can put an Opal Warning back in, and hopefully you can reuse it, or you can put this back in, or Raigeki. It's a really good card. It's a little pricey, so I'm not main decking it because I am poor. Even though I'm not actually paying for these cards, when I test a deck, I test it as if I were going to build it in real life. Because if it's good enough, if it works well enough, I would build it in real life. So. Uh, that's that's why you play Emerald, because I do own an Emerald, so... But if, if you can play this, maybe you can take Emerald out for something else you prefer. But he's really good, and when you're playing the normals, his, his other effect is actually relevant to special them, so... It's a really good card. Uh, Castell, I don't need to explain that. 101, don't need to explain it. Uh, Dark Rebellion, Xyz Dragon, I think this is pretty much staple status, too. Gaga Ga Cowboy, you can switch this for anything you want, like maybe even Heartland Draco, if you prefer those, but just gives you a little more damage to push for game. Ragna Zero is amazing. Black Ship of Corn is pretty good, I still think. Abyss Dweller is amazing, in my opinion. You should definitely play that. And then for the Evelzars, you have Dolka. Two Dolka, two Lagia. I, I mean, if you really want to, you can cut two of these and play three of each. I don't necessarily think it's necessary. I think that takes up too much space in the extra deck. So I only play uh, two of each. It's plenty. If you don't know what these do, Lagia is like a solemn judgment. It negates a monster's inherent normal or special summon or the activation of a spell or trap by detaching two. And so it negates and destroys. And Dolka is super, super good. 
Uh, it's either player's turn when an effect monster's effect activates. You didn't detach one, negate, and destroy. It can activate at any time. You can negate it from the hand, the grave, whatever. Dolka can stop it. It's really good. The one fusion card you play is obviously Norden. It's just a special, like I mentioned, for instant fusion. And then last, but most certainly not least, you play one rank six, which is Evolzar Solda. Now, what this card does is it cannot be destroyed by card effects as long as it has an Xyz material. And if your opponent would special summon monster or monsters, like Pendulum Summons, you can detach one Xyz material from him and destroy all of them. Now, it doesn't negate their summons, which, if it did, Solda would be incredibly broken, I think, if it negated the summons as well. But maybe not, because you get there's a, a ton of broken cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! and Konami doesn't care. But, um... Soul is super good, because you can make it off of this card. Like I said, this card kind of cuts away from everything the deck had stood for. You can make any Evelzar. It doesn't matter. You can make this guy, this guy, or the rank 6 using a level 2 and a level 4. It's incredible. It's awesome. That's why you play just one copy of this. If you really want to, you can play more than one. If you really like Soldo, you think he's amazing. He is amazing. But I don't think you need to play more than one of them. He has 2,600 attacks, so he's easily the biggest Devil's are, and uh, he's just super good. And rounding things out, just to give you guys an idea of some other cards you can play, I have Rhapsody and Berserk down here if you like that card. I don't really like it that much. I think it's okay. I can see why people like it. It just never seems to be that useful for me. Uh, Burst Reverse is pretty good. Uh, you pay 2,000. If you're going to play this card, you probably want to take out... Uh, meh, maybe not. But you might want to take out Ring of Destruction just to save your life points, just depending on the type of player you are. But essentially, it lets you pay 2,000 and target a monster, special summon, and face down defense mode. Westlo, get that effect off again. Uh, book, you can also book your own Westlo if you want, just so you know. Soul Charge is really good in a lot of decks, and that is the case here. Any deck that can easily uh, toolbox its extra deck, Soul Charge is usually decent in. So Soul Charge, a couple of these back. Uh, make another XCs like Lagia or Dolka, ideally, or any of these other good ones. Uh, you can play more unexpected dies. I already talked about uh, Jar of Avarice. There's a 30 of Singularity, another Mirror Force if you like it, Compulsory Evacuation Device if you want, and then the Solemn Notices. So that rounds out the Evil Tile deck profile, Evil Evel Sars, Evil Zars, all that great evolution stuff. Um, I didn't actually have a complete side deck. Obviously, those are just some other things that I had toyed around with in the testing of the deck. So you can side whatever you want. Like you could, There's a chance you could make this deck competitive by making a really good side deck for the current meta or by uh, really basing the main deck out of the current meta. This, this deck was something I made to have fun with and something that I made to kind of establish a groundwork for the deck for myself because it's one I've always found fun and interesting, as well as for you guys, as long as it's something you wanted to see. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment. Let me know if you play this deck, uh, some of the cards you play, something that's maybe there's some stuff that's really good that I didn't touch on here because maybe I didn't even know about it. Let me know. I'd love to find out, and I can we can always work on making this deck even better. And with that, I will catch you guys next time.